Good afternoon. All right. So thank you so much for being here today. My name is Lauren Henderson, and I am the Director of Community Partnership Programs for Junior Achievement. And this week, we're very excited to be here at Woodlands Middle School, uh, bringing different medical career speakers to come into the classroom and share their experience and their profession and their career journey, how they got to where they are. And we're trying to make sure that you guys know all of your opportunities in the medical field, because I know you are all in the medical academy and thinking of going into this, this field. Um, so without further ado, I'm going to let Dr. Girdis uh, introduce herself and explain all about what she does. Awesome. I am very excited to be here this afternoon, those in person and those online. Um, just to give a brief introduction, my name is Dr. Irini Girgis. I am faculty at Colby Atlantic University. So I'm a pharmacist by faith, but I love teaching. It's naturally part of who I am. So I decided to go into academia, but I also practice at Wellington Regional Medical Center as an internal medicine pharmacist. And I love talking to you guys because I know when I was young, I knew I wanted to do something in the medical field. But pharmacy never sparked up because it's not just something you hear about, right? Everybody knows what a doctor does, right? Raise your hand if you know what a doctor does. A, little bit. a nurse, right? But pharmacists, I think sometimes get kind of a little bit skewed and we know what a community pharmacist does, but not all the different subspecialties. So I'm excited to tell you that. Who has ever seen Palm Beach Atlantic University? Yes. So it's right in the middle of downtown West Palm Beach. We have a beautiful campus. Uh, we host a lot of middle schools, high schools, and colleges when you're an undergrad. So I would love to have you guys at the campus when you're ready. But today we're going to focus on pharmacists. So I'm going to start off with what do we think pharmacists do? And if I can get some answers, what do we think pharmacists do? Yes. They, I'm just going to repeat so everybody can hear online. They put all the labels and stuff on the medicines. So I'm hearing put the labels on medicine. Okay. Yeah. And you distribute the medicines to people that have like ordered them and stuff. Distribute yeah. medications once they've been ordered. Yeah. And they also like create medicines for different illnesses. Create medicine, or maybe another word with that would be compound medication. Anybody else? So I think a lot of what you guys are talking about is medication safety, which is definitely a part of it, right? So when a physician or a prescriber, um, you know, prescribes something for a patient for their state for their patient, um, or we like to call actually person-centered care now, the pharmacist is going to make sure that it's not just the right drug, it's the right medication. Is the right dose looking at their body and looking at all their other medications that they take for their other kind of problems that there's no interactions and that is part of what pharmacists do pharmacists are also big educators in the community right They're, they educate people about how to take their medications how not to take their medication the importance of adherence who knows what adherence you can sit there and give me a simple definition for medication adherence yeah. So has anybody ever been with their grandparents or hopefully not your parents, but maybe your parents and they're opening that pill box and there's still a lot of pills in there? Yes, right? And so adherence is making sure the pharmacist that they know which medications to take at what time and they actually take it every day as they're prescribed because that the meds are not going to work right if they don't. We also help prevent diseases. I don't know. Has anybody ever been to a community pharmacy and gotten a vaccine? Yeah, right. So vaccines and disease prevention, it's a big part. But to some of the all uh, pharmacists are drug experts who promote the safe and effective use of medication. So inside the healthcare field, there's different people that have expertise in different things. So pharmacists, our expertise is really medication. And so when we think about doctors, there's all kinds of doctors, right? So I'm just highlighting, and these are some of our alumni, beautiful faces, I love to see them. But we have, you know, medical doctors, so MD or DO. We have doctors that focus on dentistry, right? Uh, we have our vet meds. I know like half the kids in the world want to be vets, so they, they fall into that category. We have people that focus on podiatry, medicine of just the foot, the foot physiology, pathophysiology, and it's actually much more intense than we would think. The PharmD, which is what we call pharmacists, it's a doctorate degree, so you're a doctor at the end of the pathway that focuses on medication. We have optometrists, we have psychologists, we have psychiatrists, which would be other than the MD. We have people that focus on physical therapy and then nurse practitioners. So these are all different ways to be in the medical field and focus in on medicine, just for different subspecialties. So some of the life pharmacist duties we're going to talk about. I think somebody said make medications, right? So we call that compounding. So pharmacists do have a role in compounding, which means sometimes your patient needs a drug that's not commercially available. And so pharmacists have that expertise to compound that medication and make sure there's the right quantity. And again, focusing on safety for patients. 
Um, in the IV room, pharmacists play a significant role when a patient talks live. Those medications have to be given intravenously so they act quickly. And those pharmacists are working in sterile environments to make sure that the drug is compounded correctly. We have, again, community pharmacists that are working possibly, or industry pharmacists working in drug research, disease prevention, working on vaccine, patient counseling and patient education or person education is very important. When we think about a new diabetic, what, do we know what diabetes is? That's a simple way to describe diabetes. Low sugar? So they, yeah. Low blood sugar. So they could have low blood sugar, but what's actually the problem? Is it low or high blood sugar? High, high right? Because they have an insulin deficiency. Either they're not producing insulin or they're making insulin, but their body isn't responding to it. So a huge part of pharmacists would be how to take care of insulin, how to monitor your blood sugar, what kind of diet is appropriate, how to manage low blood sugar, which we call in the medical world, hypoglycemia. It's a lot of disease state management. We have ambulatory care pharmacists that work alongside with physicians in uh, in clinics. So if you're really interested in the heart, you could work with a group of cardiologists and your role would be to manage the heart failure and the heart failure medication. There's what I do, I believe, I the pictures, but there's hospital pharmacists, which is my, uh, my, what I do day in and day out. I do internal medicine. So we round with a group of physicians, physicians learning, medical students, pharmacy students, and medical residents. And we round and decide interdisciplinary what's best for each patient. And I get to focus on the drug therapy, what I want to continue, what I want to discontinue, what needs to be monitored more effectively, what side effects of having further medications, while the doctors get to focus on the diagnostic. So a little bit about me. I was in high school and I was like, look, I want to do something in the medical field, but I have no idea what, but I knew science was kind of what I was good at um, in writing an essay, not so much. So I remember one of my neighbors said, well, why don't you become a pharmacy technician? So I did, and I ended up working for Walgreens Pharmacy for eight years. And then I decided, obviously, to go to graduate school. So I actually went to PBA myself, and I'm aging myself, but I graduated in 2010 um, with my pharmacy degree or doctorate there. I then went on to something called residency, which is an opportunity after pharmacy school. It's not required, but if you want to do a lot of direct patient care, you specialize and you go to extra training. And then I became a clinical pharmacist as an internal medicine specialist. And again, my day in and day out as a hospital pharmacist, working on medical rounds and doing drug monitoring, adjusting it and nutrition support. And now I'm faculty at PBA, and I've been there for about 12 years now. Questions? If you guys have questions throughout, feel free to ask them, and I'm just going to repeat them so everybody can have a, or hear well what you're saying. And I am married. I have two kids and a dog, and the dog is the only kid that listens to me. <laughs> All right. So we're going to have fun together, or we're going to try to be a little bit interactive. Which of these medications do we think a patient should avoid, or if they have high blood pressure? Does anybody know what high blood pressure is first? Like high blood pressure is literally means your systemic vascular, like congested or constricted, so you have high blood pressure, but why do we care? Why do we care if you have high blood pressure? What might that result in? Yes. Can't you lead to like heart attack? Absolutely. We call high blood pressure the silent killer because it's the number one cause for heart attacks, what we call a myocardial infarction, or even strokes, right? So a lot of problems. Which of these medications, which are all over the counter, right? So you guys can all go into any pharmacy and buy them or any grocery store. Do we think as pharmacists, we should tell people, Hey, if you have uncontrolled high blood pressure, you should avoid this. Yes. Aspirin. Aspirin, perhaps. A drug close to aspirin, so that's a good initial thought. Advil. Advil is one of them. And there's one other one on there that if you have high blood pressure, it's actually quite dangerous. Sudafed? Yes, Sudafed. And those are both drugs that are going to increase your blood pressure even like higher. And I only brought this up today. There's a lot of medications that are over the counter and people assume because they're over the counter, they're safe. And for a lot of patients, they're not safe. So that's why it's really important even when you're buying over the counter medications, you're going to the counter and talking to the pharmacist and letting them know what your past medical history is. And so you guys as future pharmacists could educate them on safety. You guys are good at poking <laughs> on this. One of my colleagues helped me make this. I'm not, but we're gonna practice together. Um, I'm gonna put up names 
And you're going to tell me if it's a Pokemon or a drug. Voltaren. Drug. Drug. Yes. It's a drug and it's a cream actually that you can put on. It's like ibuprofen, but it's in a cream format. So patients can have relief of like arthritis or osteoarthritis pain without having some of the side effects when you take ibuprofen by mouth. So some potential pharmacy careers, we said you could be a community pharmacist. Those are those pharmacists you see at Walgreens, CVS, Publix, if your parents go to Costco and Costco. And it's literally their name. They're embedded in the communities. They get to know their patients. They work with doctors and they really make sure that all the drugs a person is taking from all their different providers are safe together. Nuclear pharmacists which typically work overnight and focus on nuclear medication. Psychiatric pharmacists, and we know mental health is really important in today's day and age. So they look at patients that are admitted into psych hospitals and try to stabilize them so that they can function and be well in the independent setting. And infectious disease pharmacists, what do we think they focus on? There's this big thing that we like all survived a few years ago. COVID. COVID, yeah, right? COVID brought a lot of infectious disease pharmacists, but they focus on bacteria and viruses and how to keep people safe and how to make sure our antibiotics are still working. Something called antimicrobial stewardship. Because if we're all always taking antibiotics we don't need, we create really resistant bugs. And then when we need antibiotics to work, they don't work as well. So again, that all goes back to that medication adherence, right? Taking the right drug when you need it the right way. Ambulatory care pharmacists, those pharmacists are working also in the outpatient setting, but more in a clinic. And in that clinic, they're doing chronic disease state management. And what are some chronic disease states we can think of? High blood pressure and what else? Might be here from our family. High cholesterol, yes. Half of America has or more. <laughs> what else? We mentioned our sugars earlier, so diabetes. How about some breathing? What are some breathing diseases? Asthma, asthma, yes. <laughs> COPD. Those were all prime disease states. Did you have a different one? Yeah. Huh? Pneumonia. Pneumonia? It was a thought that that's more acute, right? They treat your pneumonia with an antibiotic or antiviral, and then it goes away. But COPD, asthma, those are kind of chronic disease things. And then there's so many other specialties for pharmacy, which is why, again, I love being here, because I don't think a lot of people do that, but there's oncology pharmacists that they just focus on chemotherapy and getting those out effectively. Emergency medicine, which is working in the ER with the doctors, you know, replying to patient codes, if a patient codes, making sure that they get the right drugs. ICU pharmacists, which are critical care, pediatrics, focusing on little children, um, pharmacogenomics, pain management, and then um, if you have an entrepreneurial stereotype, being a pharmacy owner is also a pathway you can choose to do. Any questions, thoughts, concerns? So is pharmacy right for you? So some things you should ask yourself is, uh, do you enjoy helping people and making them uh, live better, healthier lives? If not, I'm not sure that healthcare is for you, but that's really like a big question, right? I think um, at PBA, we like to focus on creating servant leaders, but I think no matter what school you go to for your healthcare profession, being a servant leader is so important in healthcare, right? You're going to lead by serving your patients. Do you like to learn new things? It's constantly, constantly changing, right? When I went to pharmacy school, so many medications I learned are no longer on the market. And there's so many drugs that have come to market that I didn't learn about in school because they weren't available. So as being part of a healthcare professional in any field, to be honest, you have to want to continuously learn and continuously self-teach yourself um, so that you're up to date. If you like to share knowledge with others, Work in a team or alone. There's different subspecialties that would allow you to work more like in a hospital setting with a team or work alone. So there's some variation there. And then you probably need to have some good, you know, good skills in science, basic math. We don't do calculus, but we do a lot of, hey, weight-based dosing. So five milligrams per kilogram. We have to do some basic math to get that calculated. And then communicating with patients. And we have to be really, really good at attention to details because a really, really small mistake, right, in that basic math. Is a very big problem for the patient and puts people's lives at risk. So totally. attention to detail is definitely important in this question. So then thinking critically and problem solving. And I think that's going to be like the most important skill for all of you, no matter what you go, because we all know that there's AI now, right? Does anybody use chat to Yeah, me too. 
And I always think like, wow, there's a lot of knowledge out there, right? That's just for the grasp. So when you guys are thinking about what job I want, you're going to have to ask yourself, with all that knowledge out there, how am I going to help my job or my company or my patients utilize that knowledge appropriately? And I think that's really critical thinking and problem solving. That's what AI is not going to do for us. Um, so other things, I think money matters. I think a lot of us like to think it doesn't matter, but if you're struggling to pay your bills, you're probably not that happy. Pharmacists have to pay with an average salary of $141,000 a year. And as you climb the ladder and you go into management positions, you can easily hit the 200 and up. Did you have a question? No, sure. Thank you. And then when you're looking at fields that are engineers, engineering is also a great field uh, that have high pay. You're going to see pharmacy up there, computer science, physics, the law of science. And I know you guys are all in STEM, so it looks like you're trying to the right direction. So next, go back Job security, high demand. Uh, pharmacists are in great demand, especially after COVID. A lot of physicians, there's a lot of remote working pharmacists. So depending on if you want to be in a setting or at home, there's options. Great flexibility. And a lot of options. So if you've done something for a while, but you want to change, there's always options. And it's one of the fastest routes to a doctor degree. Our pre pharmacy prerequisites are about 62 credits. So most people can get that done in two years. But a lot of our people who are applying to graduate school will have a bachelor's degree, but not required. And then it's four years of graduate school. And your rewarding career is serving others in the community. Since right. Drug or something else? Drug. Oh, I hope John. There we go. All right, but it is plus the fifth droid, which is a drug. That one is actually. So, what's the roadmap to pharmacy? I know you guys are a little bit younger, but um, if you're type A like myself, always plan ahead. So, you would go ahead to high school, finish high school up strong, then finish your pre pharmacy which could take two to four years, depending on what you want. But honestly, the prereqs, you can easily get done in two years, especially when you're uh, at your local high school, probably doing some dual enrollment and AP courses, you could get some of those prereqs out of the way. Again, no bachelor's degree is required. We have an early insurance program at PDA, and so do a lot of other pharmacy school. We actually don't have an admissions test requirement. We just look at your GPA and what you did in undergrad. Pharmacy school is four years, but three years are in the classroom setting where you're sitting down and you're taking in all the knowledge. But in the summers between, we do some experiential training, which it just means that you're out in the setting and you're practicing pharmacy. And then your entire fourth year is nothing but practice. So you go practice in a community pharmacy and hospital and ambulatory care. You pick electives and things like the ICU, emergency medicine. Um, and then you get your doctorate degree and then you have to pass a licensing exam. That ensures that you're minimally competent, uh, which if you come from a strong program, all of you would be, to practice pharmacy safely for patients. And then we talked about the median salary. There's an option to complete residency or fellowship if you want additional training. You can then become board certified in the specialty you like, whether that's pediatrics, pharmacotherapy, oncology. I got board certified in pharmacotherapy, and you can work in a variety of settings. This is an overview of what your curriculum may look like in the future. Um, in our first year, we focus on some of those foundational sciences. So we were doing anatomy, physiology, and pathophysiology of disease. We look at principles of drug action. So where do drugs work on to take them? What receptors are they working on? We look at calculations, how to do that basic math justification. Kinetics, which is what happens to the drug once it's taken in. Uh, clinical lab and physical assessment, which looks like partly what you're already doing here in the classroom, looking at that mannequin. Healthcare delivery, like where is pharmacy in the healthcare setting as a whole, and what are some barriers to healthcare? Disease state prevention. And then starting that second and third year, we focus on disease states and we break them up by body system. So you go over all the heart diseases first, then the lung diseases, then stuff like diabetes and endocrinology, then liver disorders and kidney issues, and then kind of slip through the curriculum of infectious disease. Oncology is where you're going to go through your cancers. And we also have a case studies course where you get to work with a group of students and you get a patient and you get to do kind of a mock disease state workup of the patient, decide what the diagnosis is, and then as the pharmacist really coming up with a really specific treatment plan. And then your fourth year, again, are all rotations. So you're out in the community at different hospitals and healthcare settings practicing uh, your passion and That is PDA. 
and that's a well, this is all PBA, but here's the Gregory School Pharmacy. Uh, we're right across from downtown West Palm, and then you have your airport still in the beach, but in grad school, I'm going to be honest, I don't have a ton of time for that, but I do a lot. Some distinctives of our school is we are a, a pharmacy school of faith, so we're a Christ-centered program, but we welcome students from all religious backgrounds, but our school has a Christian foundation built into it. We have very small class sizes with about 50 students in each class, so a student-to-faculty ratio of 8 to 1, and countless leadership, and we like to call our students get to enjoy a farm where we feel because you all essentially become family in our program, and you feel like well And then we offer medical mission trips, and we pay for most of the students to attend that for a big portion through scholarships because we think it's just an amazing experience, and you get to go out in the world and really practice uh, what you preach. So. Recently, we've gone to Uganda, the Dominican Republic, locally here in Belle Glade, Honduras, and more. We have other undergrad degree programs and dual, en dual enrollment or dual degree programs. If you choose your program, and I know this is really hard for you guys, so I'll just kind of fly through this. But you could also get an MBA while you're in the pharmacy program. We have a medical Spanish concentration, which is a huge need as we see a lot of our patients here speak Spanish. So being able to communicate to them is very important. And then we also offer uh, postgraduate programs that I'm actually the PGY1 residency director. So if you get there and you have questions, I would be happy to be your mentor. And this is what pharmacy school life is like at PBA. So we had um, our students compete with the faculty every year in every class. Um, and that's when competing, the faculty always get destroyed because we have no muscles compared to our students. So the faculty are always on the other side on the floor. I told them we should stop tug of war. It's like bad for our backs. We go out in the community and we serve, we take blood glucose measurements, we try to screen people for diabetes in our annual health care. Um, this is one of our alumni at a mission trip, and I believe she's in Uganda in that picture. We have a lab, and Dr. Norm there was amazing at doing research. She takes her students who are interested in research and does lab work with them. Uh, these are our faculty that have a focus on community pharmacy. So they pre-cut there, and then again, some of our Go buy that crack store drug or poker. Drug. drug. That one is actually a drug that's a very commonly used drug in the drug class. We call it statin, and we use that for high cholesterol. Here are some of our prerequisites. So, what would you have to take in undergrad to get to pharmacy school? And this is really pretty similar to if you want to go to medical school. But your English courses, calculus, general chemistry one and two, organic one and two, A and P one and two, biochemistry and microbiology are your core science courses you want. So over the counter quiz, we're going to go through what is each drug used for? What do we use Advil for? Back pain, Back pain. headaches, headaches. stomach aches. So really it's what we call an NSAID, a non steroidal drug. And it works as an anti-inflammatory and helps with any kind of inflammatory med, uh, pain. But what are some safety concerns? I get a lot of hospital admissions from people taking too much Advil. Yes. If you use too much of it, uh, it can hurt your stomach. All right. What are some other safety concerns? So we talked about hurting your stomach by causing a GI bleed or ulcer. Yes. Can you overdose on it? You can absolutely overdose on it. It could hurt your kidney. Um, anything else? Can increase that blood pressure. Sorry, open house. So we need like aspirin. What do we use aspirin for? Headaches. You can absolutely sit for headaches. Heart pain. So we hear a lot of people. If you think you're having a heart attack, we tell them to take two baby aspirins and chew them. Yes, absolutely. If you're having like a heart attack, actually, and then you can use it for secondary prevention, which means if we've had a heart event, you take a baby aspirin daily to prevent another one. Those are some common reasons why we use aspirin. And this has the same safety concern. If you take too much aspirin, it hurts your stomach and it can cause an ulcer. Claritin. But I'm, I'm hearing something about the nose. Not stuffy, yeah. Allergies is a huge indication, right? Whether you have seasonal allergies or you have a cold and you have a runny nose, it's going to dry it up. It's that your class, we call it antihistamine. And then I use the same for that control. So it's probably during the last time. Next game. What is next game for? Three. Yeah. Three. 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 Do you want to guess now anyway? 
three to see three thirty somewhere. It's a hard one, I think, actually. But does anybody know what's for? So, yeah, I think it's for Okay, okay. now so this is what's called okay. proton okay. pump inhibitor, and it actually inhibits acid release in our stomach, and it's actually for heartburn or burn. You guys are too young to worry about that. Robitussin. Yeah. Cough syrup. Cough syrup, absolutely. Sudafed. Yes. Services? Yeah, congestion. When, you, when you're feeling like you have a flu or something, Sudafed might make you feel good. And then I have a video here. We're going to see if it's going to work. It's just a little bit about our pharmacy school. Enough. Welcome to Palm Beach Atlantic University's Lloyd L. Gregory School of Pharmacy. Located in the heart of South Florida, where there are endless opportunities to make a difference. As a future pharmacist, you were chosen to care and serve your patients with excellence. There is no better place to be equipped than here at PBA. Our small class sizes and caring faculty ensure that you'll receive the personalized education experience you deserve. You'll discover a friendly, supportive, and diverse student body where you can form lifelong friendships and develop a thriving professional network. We'll prepare you to lead from day one. Our focus on servant leadership and small class sizes provides endless leadership opportunities to our many professional student organizations. We believe that cost shouldn't be a barrier to your journey. Our Farm D degree program is both affordable and fully accredited by the Accreditation Commission for Pharmacy Education. And with over $300,000 in scholarships awarded each year, your dreams are within reach. The Gregory School of Pharmacy offers medical mission trips both locally and abroad, allowing you to put your knowledge and skills to work for those in need around the world. And it's all part of our mission, Pharmacy with Faith. We develop servant leaders who are patient care advocates, fully committed to raising the standards of practice within the profession of pharmacy by following Christ's example of serving, teaching, and healing those in need. Join us at Palm Beach Atlantic University's Floyd L. Gregory School of Pharmacy and make a difference. You are chosen to care, and we're here to help you do just that. Visit our website to learn more. <laughs> okay, so endless opportunities is really the take home point. I have some brochures that we're going to hand out after class. If you guys want to learn more about the profession, you could take it home, scan it with your parents, and just see if pharmacy is really right for you and explore those different career opportunities. Um, and yeah, that's it. Do you guys have any questions for me? Any questions? I have some from the online people. Yeah. Um, Somebody is asking, what does your day-to-day -day look like? Like, what does an average day of a pharmacist look like? So I'm going to give two responses. Uh, when I was full-time in the hospital setting, because I'm a little unique in that, in academia, uh, I would be at the hospital. It's shift work, to be honest. So it depends on if you want a 7 to 3.30 shift, or if you're in the emergency room, you can pick a middle day shift. But in the hospital setting, I would go, I would work up my patients that I'm going to round on. So that means I've looked through all their medications, what are their labs that day, so that when I go see the doctor, I can tell them what medications I want to continue, which ones I want to discontinue, which ones I want to change the dose for. And then in the afternoon, I do something called pharmacokinetic dosing, which means a lot of the drugs the patients are on in the hospital require very specific dosing for that patient. So I would do the dosing for my patients that I'm following on. I would also look at anticoagulants, which are blood thinners that patients have to be on after they have like a heart attack or if they have a uh, blood clot in their lungs or their legs. So I would look at dosing and safety for that. And that would really consume most of my afternoon. All pharmacists also do a lot of uh, kind of hospital level management of drugs. We do a lot of projects and data collection to make sure that the drugs in the hospital are being appropriately utilized. That's a great question. In academia, I get to do everything I just said three days a week in the other two days a week. I'm really focused on um, on teaching students. I'm in campus and I teach disease states and I get to come here and do some amazing things like this. Yes. Is pharmacy a good life and work balance? So I'm hearing, is pharmacy a great life and work balance? And to be honest, I think it's a great one, which is why I picked it. Um, there's not a lot of fields that, as a woman, I wanted something that I could go part-time if I wanted to and my kids were young. So there's a lot of part-time opportunities. There's full-time opportunities. There's opportunities to work from home, which is really hard to be a remote healthcare worker. 
but there's a good amount of opportunities for pharmacists. In general, pharmacists work 40 hours a week unless you're in a higher uh, level management, then you're um, you're getting paid a salary, so that can kind of ebb and flow. But I think that there's a lot of opportunities for a good life. A lot of hospitals have also moved to four 10-hour shifts so that you have one day off in the week, and that's awesome for doctors. That's a great question. Do you have a favorite part of the game? No, it's really hard. I have, you know, I love doing a potpourri of things, which is why I love academia. I think my favorite part of my job is connecting with patients and getting to see my students on rotation. Because I think they start off like so nervous and they don't want to talk to the doctors. And by the end of the rotation, they're out of their shell and they're talking to patients. And something as simple as making sure that your patient can afford their medication list is so impactful for a lot of people. I think that might be my favorite. What are some soft skills that you need for this job? And so when we say soft skills, it's kind of like, you can take all these classes and get all these certificates and certifications, but what are some things outside of that that are important for this line of work? I think communicating is key uh, and being able to show empathy. I think uh, being in healthcare is so important to be able to be empathetic for patients. I can't tell you how many times I go to discharge patients from the hospital and they look at me and they say, I can't afford $100 a month on medicine. And we can't just be like, okay, that's on you, right? You have to be able to care for that patient, show empathy, and work with them to see if you can kind of achieve their financial goals and get them the drug they need. And also, a lot of people that aren't going to agree, a lot of people have fear of medications and fear of vaccines. So being able to get to their level, communicate at their level, I think it's huge. Teamwork, you're working with a lot of big personalities in medicine, like a lot of big personalities. So you need to be able to be humble, uh, to choose your battles carefully. Um, I think it's just really important. And then I can't express enough critical thinking and problem solving. I just think that's so important moving forward with the amount of AI that is being released. And I, I'm not against it. I'm not like, don't use chat GPT. I'm actually trying to think of creative ways to use it in my classroom and I'm a teacher myself. But I think we have to know like, well, with all this information out there, how am I going to critically think what's right, what's wrong here, and how am I going to utilize that? That's a great question. What was your favorite class you took in college when you were doing your study? So in undergrad, I loved organic chemistry. Something about it just came alive to me. Um, but so I thought about being a chemist for a while, then my parents were like, what are you going to do with that? So anyways, I ended up in, in pharmacy. Um, I really loved that. In pharmacy school, I liked all my disease-based courses, and I particularly loved critical care topics, like patients that are in the ICU, because I like that you have to know the disease state to its extreme. Do you have a favorite success story at PBA? A success story, like of a student or? Personally, or I guess a student. Um, personally, you know, I never thought I'd be a teacher. I, I was actually really, really anxious talking in front of people for a long time. And I had this little prayer I say before I did it. So now I watch myself and you can probably give me any set of slides that I can talk at this point. So I think just being able to conquer your fears and practice things is how you get better. But for my students, we have students that come from all over the world, different socioeconomic backgrounds, and there are so many success stories. People, my graduates are now directors of pharmacy. They're working at the federal level, and I get to see them and hear their name and know that I was part of that story, uh, which is just something I'm very grateful for. Are you like work your like Christianity until like the way you're talking? How do I work my Christianity? It's tough to be worth. So I'm privileged in that I work at a Christian university, but we have students that come from all religious backgrounds or no religious backgrounds at all. So something I love about PBA is we just focus on creating servant leaders and those servant leaders kind of those tenets cross all religions, right? Like just being able to serve others and to care for others is what's most important. For me personally, I actually believe in the power of prayer. So I love being able to pray for my patients even when they don't know it. Because you're seeing people at their worst parts of their life. Like they're terrified, right? They have a new diagnosis that's scary, or their loved ones in the in the hospital, which is really scary. And so you get to be part of that. How many years of school did you have to come through? So, you know, I worked hard in high school, I did some dual enrollment. So I was able to finish or the undergrad in two years, and I even got to take some fun classes like scuba diving and art, and then four years of grad school. So it took me six years to earn my pharmacy degree. Yeah, and all of you could achieve that and more.
what's the biggest roadblock that you've had so far in this journey, I guess, to this point? Yeah. I would like to see pharmacists more doing direct disease state management and prescribing. But in medicine, there's a lot of competing personalities, and everybody's afraid that you're going to take part of their side. So that's something I would like to see pharmacy grow in, and I find that personally as a roadblock. I don't have it as much in the hospital setting, which is why I chose it because I get to work with those other practitioners. But I think that that's been a struggle. Like, since you're like, I know more about this drug than anybody else, and I want to be able to control it myself. Right. Where do you see yourself in five years? You know, I love academia, so I'd like to stay there. Um, I just took on being a residency program director, and I, I love mentoring students and mentoring residents. So I would like to grow possibly an administrative role later on. Awesome. Thanks, Thanks. Yeah. Thanks. I just want to thank you all. I know it's mid to end of the day. You guys have been a great bunch, and thank you, everybody, for their attendance.